The Ultimate K6 II. Once again, this CPU pushes itself to the very top of my projects list. In the background, you see me deleting an AMD K6 II Plus rated at 570 MHz. Today, we are going to turn this CPU into a K6 III Plus. In another video, I already modded an AMD K6 II Plus 450 into a K6 III Plus. The mod unlocks an additional 128KB of level 2 cache, for a total of 256KB. If you are lucky enough, the disabled cache portion is not defective and turns your K6 II Plus into a K6 III Plus. There is another mod that disables the entire level 2 cache of the CPU. Wait, what? Why would you want to disable the entire level 2 cache? Well, I don't to be honest. At least not after I have glued the CPU back together and have no option to enable the cache again. But wouldn't it be nice to switch between 0, 128 or 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache? If it just weren't all hidden below the aluminum lid. Well, let's deal it the CPU first before we go any further. And here is the cleaned up version. This time I have used a soft pencil eraser on the CPU die. It worked like a charm. If you would like to see my first attempt to mod such a CPU, please watch my other video. You will see a lot more details of the cleaning process. Now since we have cleaned up the CPU, it is time to come back to the issue I mentioned before. I want to modify this CPU in a way that allows me to configure the level 2 cache even after I have glued the aluminum lid back onto the ceramic base. Maybe some traces that come out from underneath the heat spreader and can be bridged with a jumper. That is a stupid idea, isn't it? Well, let's get started. To create traces, I got some copper foil tape which I cut with a razor blade into thin wires and stick them onto the ceramic base. While I was working out the details, I remembered that those CPUs do not have a temperature sensor. Some motherboard manufacturers took it on themselves to place a temperature sensor below the CPU, like the DFI board I am using here. But that is the temperature below the CPU, not the CPU die. Wouldn't it also be nice to have a more accurate temperature reading? I could add a tiny thermistor, place it right next to the CPU die and expose the connections to the outside as well. Around 4 hours later or so, I finally got it to what you're seeing on the screen right now. Instead of moving the surface mounted resistors, I replaced them with jumpers at the edge of the ceramic base. This is the configuration of the original K62 Plus with 128KB of level 2 cache. The left two pins lead to the thermistor and have to be connected to a temperature sensing circuit. More about this at the end of the video. The next three pins enable or disable the entire level 2 cache. And finally, the three most right pins control if the CPU has 128 or 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. Once more, the configuration you see here is for the K62 Plus, the original configuration of this CPU. Since I am placing the aluminum lid back on, I need to make sure that the copper traces won't touch it. Additional captain tape will do the trick. I just have to make sure that we are not adding too much height to obstruct the aluminum heat spreader. Ok, now it's time to reassemble the CPU.
If you enjoyed the video so far, please press the like button. Now is the moment of truth. This is the K62 Plus configuration, basically the original CPU. Let's see if it boots. And yes, the BIOS detects the K62 Plus. This is good, at least we know that the CPU is still working. The temperature measured by the motherboard also seems to be the same as before the mod. Looks like the aluminum lid does make good contact with the die. But now it is time to test one of our other mods. Let's disable the level 2 cache. I have changed the center jumper, which should make the CPU now a plain K62. And yes, a K62 at 600MHz without any on-die level 2 cache. Now, the 1MB on the motherboard is being used as level 2 cache. CPU-C is a bit confused with the CPU, but we can see that there is no 128 or 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache. We see the 1MB cache, but this is located on the motherboard. Now, let's turn the CPU into a K63+. This is the jumper configuration for it. Ok, the board shows a K63. I guess the board doesn't detect the plus versions of the CPU. But the performance should be still the same. Now it is time to test out another feature that we have added to the CPU. The next to the die temperature reading. I'm using an Arduino to connect with a .NET application written in C-Sharp to read data from the Arduino. If you're interested, the code for the .NET application is on GitHub and linked in the video description. And yes, we get a temperature reading as well. The motherboard temperature reading is around 5 degrees lower than what we measure with the internal thermistor. Let's boot into Windows and see if the temperature changes. The temperature does not fluctuate a lot. It seems to be staying below 45 degrees. Ok, this project is complete. Now I have one CPU that can be a K62, a K62+, or a K63+. There is no need for me to change the CPU anymore. I can just go ahead and reconfigure the jumpers. We reached the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this follow-up project on modifying the AMD K62 Plus, a versatile CPU. You can support me by subscribing to my channel and pressing the like button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.